this, this improved science and engineering will, whether we like it or not, give us more and more leverage to affect the planet, to control the planet, to give us weather and climate control, not because we plan it, not because we want it, just because science delivers it to us bit by bit with better knowledge of the way the system works and better engineering tools to affect it. Now, suppose that um, space aliens arrived on, maybe they're going to land at the UN headquarters down the road here, or maybe they'll pick a smarter spot. But um, <laughs> suppose they arrive and they give you a box, and the box has two knobs. One knob is the knob for controlling global temperature. Maybe another knob is a knob for controlling CO2 concentrations. You might imagine that we would fight wars over that box, because we have no way to agree about where to set the knobs. We have no global governance. And different people will have different places they want it set. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. It's not very likely. But um, we're building that box. The scientists and engineers of the world are building it piece by piece in their labs, even when they're doing it for other reasons, even when they're thinking they're just working on protecting the environment. They have no interest in crazy ideas like engineering the whole planet. They develop science that makes it easier and easier to do. And so I guess my view on this is not that I want to do it. I do not but that we should move this out of the shadows and talk about it seriously, because sooner or later we'll be confronted with decisions about this, and it's better if we think hard about it, even if we want to think hard about reasons why we should never do it. Uh, I'll give you two different ways to think about this problem that are the beginning of my thinking about how to think about it. But what we need is not just a few oddballs like me thinking about this. We need a broader debate, a debate that involves... Musicians, scientists, philosophers, uh, writers who get engaged with this question about climate engineering and think seriously about what its uh, implications are. So here's one way to think about it, which um, is that we just do this instead of cutting emissions because it's cheaper. I guess the thing I haven't said about this is it is absurdly cheap. It's conceivable that, say, using the sulfates method or this method I've come up with, you could uh, create an ice age at a cost of 0.001% of GDP. It's very cheap. We have a lot of leverage. It's not a good idea, but it's just important. I'll tell you how big, how big the lever is. The lever is that big. And that, that calculation isn't much in dispute. You might argue about the, the sanity of it, but the leverage is, 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 is real. So because of this, we could deal with the problem simply by uh, uh, stopping uh, uh, reducing emissions and just as, as concentrations go up, we can increase the amount of geoengineering. I don't think anybody takes that seriously. Because under this scenario, we walk further and further away from the current climate. You have all sorts of other problems like ocean acidification that come from CO2 in the atmosphere anyway. Uh, nobody but maybe one or two very odd folks really suggest this. But 